want you really right now, once again, to start thinking about your goals and about your dreams. And as you begin to envision them, one of the things that I think that's very important that we have to always go back to, as you look at your goals and dreams, and, and I want you to expand them, and, and it's very important to realize that I, I found that most people fail in life not because they aim too high and miss. Most people fail in life because they did just like I did for so many years. They aimed too low and hit. They didn't believe in themselves. So I want you right now, as we begin to think about the lessons and all the things that you've experienced and all of the comments and stories and strategies and lessons that you've had, I think it's time to revisit and look at your goals and dreams and let's raise the bar. I remember as a kid, we would be in the backyard and, and we would play jump and somebody would get on one side of the stick, my sister and then my brother, we would run and we'd jump over it. And then they say, raise it up a little bit higher. We have to back up and we would run and we'd jump over it again. And then we say, raise it up a little higher. And the higher it, it got, we have to begin to change our approach and how we're going to get over the bar. And that's the same thing in life. And so right now, I want you to think about your goals and dreams as you begin to raise them a little higher. And I want you to say with me, it's possible. It's possible. You know, the easiest thing that I do is speak and train people how to speak. Go into prisons and juvenile detention centers and to high schools and colleges. Speak before thousands of people. I can do that in my sleep. Let me share with you the, the most difficult thing I've ever done in my life. And it took me years to do. And that was to believe that it was possible. To believe that I can do it. Given my circumstances, born in an abandoned building on a floor, being adopted, being labeled educable, mentally retarded, failing twice in school, no college training, never worked for a major corporation. To believe that I had something of value to say somebody would want to listen to me, to believe that, that somebody would pay me to talk to them. Have you ever thought about something you wanted to do and, and you talk yourself out of it? I, I remember going to see Zig Ziglar, who I consider the number one motivational speaker on the planet, and Dr. Norman Vincent Peale when he was alive, and Robert Schuller. I, I used to see them and I would be so pumped up and inspired after hearing Jim Rohn, who recently passed, one of the great motivational speakers of all time, and, and Charlie Tremendous Jones. And, and I, I would go to my car pumped up, saying, yes, 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 I can. And then after a while, my mental conditioning would kick in. And I would say, Les Brown, you can't do that. You don't have a college education. Les Brown, you can't do that. You don't even know who your parents are. That's from. You can't do that. You failed twice in school. Come on. You ever thought about something you wanted to do and, and you talk yourself out of it? There's a proverb that says, if there's no enemy within, the enemy outside can do us no harm. That's why it's important that you make it a point every day to listen to Paul, to listen to me, to review these lessons, to, to get them deep, not only in the conscious mind, but the subconscious mind, and get them in your spirit. Well, how often should I do it? Do it until you are producing the results. That's how often you should do it. And, and you never stop, because once you stop, that's when those negative thoughts will come back. Once you stop, that's when you will begin to doubt yourself. Once you stop, I'm telling you what I know. Yes. Every day, it's a selling job on you. It's possible. I can do this. I can make this happen. No matter how bad it is or how bad it gets, I'm going to make it. It's possible. Yes, your dream is possible. Say that to yourself every day. Feed your mind with words that you write and words that you hear and words that you speak to yourself. Feed your faith and your doubts will starve to death. Say to yourself, it's possible. It's possible. It's possible. Even when you have no evidence to point to, say to yourself, it's possible. There's nothing as powerful as a made up mind. It's a struggle sometimes to do that, especially when you have people around you telling you that it's not possible, that you can't do it. And they're constantly pointing out your failures of the past, constantly reminding you 
of all of the things that you don't have going for you. I'm reminded of the story of two little boys that were playing on, on some ice during the winter. And, and, and as they got further out on this ice, one fell through the, the thin ice. And, and so the little fellow that was still on top of the, the ice, he was trying to save his, his little buddy. And he couldn't reach him, he was trying to pull him. He could see him through the thin ice as he got further away from him, struggling. And, and he couldn't reach him and he's trying to break the ice and he couldn't do it and he looked around and he saw a tree in the distance and he ran and, and he got up on the tree and, 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 and he pulled and broke down an enormous sized branch and came back and, and savagely began to beat that ice and broke it and, and miraculously he saved his friend. And when the paramedics came and they were able to revive this little boy they were scratching their heads, they're trying to figure this out, said, how, how could this little pruny fellow go up in a tree and break off a branch this size and then come back and beat and break the ice and save his friend? They thought it was just miraculous, it was baffling. And an old guy who was there said, I can tell you how he did it. And they said, how? How did he do it? And he said, there was no one here to tell him that he couldn't do it. Whoa, what could you do? What could I do? What could all of us do if we did not have the naysayers in our lives? That, that, that we believe naively like that little boy, that it was possible. What would you do if, if, if failure was not on the table?